Hello, I am Patsy Climax. Um, I am a singing, burlesque performer, MC, producer, and educator. And after my recent series of sexy multitasking, which was a four week student workshop, I thought it might be fun and educational to go through one of my signature sing and strip acts and kind of break it down and give you the anatomy of it. So this is going to be the anatomy of a sing and strip. Uh, I'm coming to you live from Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, outside with the squirrels and the otters. Um, and I'm really excited to kind of talk about the process that goes into creating a sing and strip act, uh, the things that kind of go through your head while you're doing one, etc., etc., etc. So today I'll be talking about uh, my act, Everybody's Girl, which has been an act I've been doing for five-ish years, kind of since I started burlesque. It's been to festivals. It's been in all kinds of shows. I performed it for Dolly Parton. I won some awards with it. Um, it's been my like go-to one since I very, very started my burlesque journey. Um, so. And it's one of my favorites. And I think it's a great example of like sing and strip techniques. Boom, 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 boom. So. So the very first thing I do in this number uh, kind of goes against what some might say are rules when it comes to sing and strip. I run onto the stage and immediately have to find a way to catch my breath. Uh, depending on the venue, I have sometimes run all the way from the back of the house. I've run across the stage. I've gone up, down, all around. It's just, I think it's a funny way to start it. Uh, um, and usually when I do it, depending on the venue, I will find a place to hide before I come out for like the big burr, 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 entrance. Um, <clears throat> And this is one, because it's funny, and two, because it gives me a chance to like catch my breath, recenter myself, be like, okay, we're gonna do a show now. Um, but I think it's a bit, a bit that is worth doing a little bit of extra work to then like catch your breath afterwards, because it always gets a laugh and it starts you out of the gate like strong. <laughs> The next kind of bit I want to point out in the song um, is kind of things that I do with my mouth and my face. Uh, so I'll do like little jaw moves or I'll like make faces, like pull faces. Um, and obviously anytime you're performing burlesque, the faces you make are incredibly important. But when you are singing, it's particularly important because people are looking at your face and they're especially looking at your mouth because they want to see what you're saying. So you can use this to your advantage to pull all kinds of faces. Um, and it also gives you something to do with your face pretty much the entire time. So you don't have to be thinking about what your face is doing because your face is singing. So tiny, tiny sing and strip hack. I So the next fun thing you can do in a sing and strip that you can't always do in an act where you're not uh, having a microphone of some sort is you can talk to your audience. So I really love to fill the non-singing space in my sing and strip acts with talking if it's appropriate. So in this one, I do it a couple of times um, and it helps you tell the story. It's always funny because people aren't expecting you to start talking because in there, for some reason, when people see a sing and strip act, they think, oh, this is just what's playing. And it, they, they almost treat it like you're lip syncing almost, but I can talk to you and I can say directly what's happening in front of me. And sometimes if the audience is right, I'll do a little like crowd, light crowd work. Um, so that's one of my favorite little like tidbits to throw in there because the audience can hear you because you're mic'd. Uh, so you also have to think about that in your non singing moments like what sounds is my mouth making if my microphone if I'm wearing a headset mic and my mic is close to my face or if I'm still holding my mic 
what kind of sounds am I making? Uh, because not only will they hear the things that you're trying to let them hear, they will hear you going if you, you know, decide to get a little buck wild with it. So good to remember, they can hear you. It's crazy, it's crazy like that. That girl was exactly like me. We share this philosophy, Olay. Wimdy here. Um, so this is another little bit where I do some talking to the audience, directly to the audience when I take the glove off. And one of my like quote unquote rules of thumb with the sing and strip and really any burlesque number is I like to wait until at least the first chorus to take anything off. Um, the chorus is going to be something that you repeat a couple of times so they're going to hear it. But the funny thing is when you are multitasking on stage, sometimes the audience has a hard time multitasking and watching and listening at the same time. So I try to do big physical moments or removals or things like that as much as possible on smaller vocal moments or on moments that will be repeated. So like the chorus. So I do a lot of the heavy lifting burlesque wise on the chorus because they're gonna hear it a couple of times. They're gonna get the picture. With this one in particular, the story also fits me starting to strip when I start talking about what the song is about, which is I'm everybody's girl. So like, the beginning of the song is a little bit more demure. That's the bit is that, you know, uh, and like the, the chorus starts with, I'm not the type who's ready for dating someone steady. I'm everybody's girl. And then that's when the clothes start coming off and it makes sense. Uh, also, it goes along with what I like to do. So it, perfect harmony. It's one. There's a point to my behavior, which is smart girls always share their riches. So in this moment when the boa, I make a kind of bold vocal choice that isn't the most pretty sounding, but it one goes with the move that I'm doing. It goes with the words that I'm saying. Um, and because all of those things go together, it's an effective moment. So you don't always have to sound beautiful like Christine Daae. You can use your voice to make bold vocal choices when you're making choices on stage that go with it. It's also a nice little break for your voice sometimes to integrate fun things so like one of my life hacks is if I ever feel phlegmy I'll do that character voice that rah, 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 kind of character voice because it helps clear the phlegm if I know I've got like a big note coming up that needs to be clear um and it goes with the moment so you can make fun choices like that it doesn't always have to be beautiful you know you can do have fun it's burlesque so if your heart succumbs don't let it you're certain to regret it. All others come and get it. I'm everybody's girl. I could never be a cow hands girl. La, 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 la. So as burlesque performers, we love to use our mouths for things like removals and things like that. And with singing and stripping, you have to be mindful of when you decide to do that because obviously you're using your mouth to sing, but it can be used for a bit because we love a bit. And in this particular number, it works for that moment because I always kind of do, the, this act has kind of morphed over the years and it changes depending on the audience. And so I always do something kind of unpleasant sounding <laughs> right there uh, to kind of show the juxtaposition between like what the line is la 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 and so you could do that very prettily but i normally will do it in a kind of annoying way to kind of you know subvert expectations there and so with the glove removal you can make a kind of bold vocal choice as long as you're singing around what you're putting in your mouth um you always have to be mindful to not like swallow a rhinestone while you're doing that um and i have a couple different versions of this act and i'm going to insert some clips later on from an older version where I do some things a little differently. Do you want to know why I just can't keep my calves together? I'm in the green bodies, girl. 
double three called Aristotle said it if you got it why not spread it so this is another fun moment where you can make a fun vocal choice because of the movement you're doing because uh, there's not going to be a lot of pretty sounds coming out of you when you're doing squats like that <laughs> um, but you just have to also make sure that you get a good breath before. So you see me right before I do all of that squatting, I kind of take a moment and like have a little bit of stillness because that's me catching my breath because I know I'm about to do something a little more physical. Now I have, you know, more dance capabilities than this shows. I like to keep the dancing kind of to a minimum when I'm singing for me personally, because I'm, what I'm showing off is that I am singing. That's the impressive thing that I'm doing. Um, but if you're gonna do more dancing, you just always have to be mindful of having moments to catch your breath. Because if you're going to be singing, singing has to be at least part of the focus. Because if what's coming out of your mouth doesn't sound good, the audience isn't wanna, gonna wanna be a part of it. Um, so it, this is one of those moments where you can make a fun vocal choice, but you just have to make sure to have that breath before in order to do the physicality that you want. Everybody loves a squat. Uh, and I have a different version of this whole bit that I'm gonna insert next where I use a mic stand because it's important to have, when you're singing, to have different versions, whether or not you're going to be able to use your headset mic um, because some venues just can't accommodate it. So before I bought a headset mic, I used to always do this with a wireless mic on a mic stand. Um, pro tip, if you're gonna use a mic stand, use a straight one. Don't use one of those guitar ones that's bendy. Those are harder to mess with. Uh, and I like to use the mic stand as a prop. If it's gonna be on stage, I'm gonna use it, you know? And a mic stand is good so that you can have your hands to do removals and things. So I'm gonna insert a little bit where I use the mic stand kind of as a prop and do some fun physicality with it right up next. I could never be a cow hands girl. So this is an older clip um, from really early on when I was doing it. This is the award, quote unquote, award winning version of it though. So it's before I upgraded the costumes, before I bought my headset mic. Um, it was kind of different. I had like the, all of the under things have been upgraded since then. So there's a lot of different things in this one. And obviously I'm using the mic stand. Um, so there's a couple different things that I do in this version to compensate for the fact that I have a mic stand. One, the La La choice is different because I'm gonna take the glove off at a different moment because my hands are free at different times because of the mic stand. So during the la 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 there, instead of doing that glove removal, I, you know, make it kind of an annoying like nee, 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 kind of moment, which you can, you know, you can, whatever sounds your voice can make are good to make in a, in a number as long as they're either funny or pleasant to listen to. Um, a little later on in the clip, you see me use the mic stand as a prop. Microphones and mic stands are penises. Just like gloves are penises. Like we use things as like phalluses all the time. A giant metal stick is no different. Um, so I do the bit a little bit differently with the mic stand. Um, and then at the very end, that squat thing has always been right there for spread it. And when I used to have the mic stand, I would squat beneath it and the audience can still hear me, but just lower obviously because I'm not mic'd anymore. And for some reason, going away from the mic in a strategic moment is a, just a bit that always has worked for me. Um, a lot of com like comedians that sing do it. And so I kind of have stolen it from that. Uh, so that moment had always hit and it hits with or without the mic stand going away from it. But it's just good to have different versions of it depending on what the sound system you're going into allows. Um, Cause sometimes you don't have a sound person that can run your headset mic. Sometimes they give you a, a corded mic, God, heaven forbid. Uh, so you just have to be ready to adjust it based on what you have. So we've talked about a lot of different techniques. So I'm gonna kind of just let the meat of the act play. And you'll notice these techniques that I've talked about being prevalent throughout this as well, the talking, the getting your breath, 
the using your voice in fun and different ways, but this is kind of the meat of the act and most of the removals are about to happen. And then we'll talk some more about the ending. Go rattling any sabers, exerting any labors, just share me with the neighbors. I'm everybody's One of my like quote unquote signature moves has become the tassel twirling by while hitting the big note, which, you know, kind of contradicts something I said earlier, which is like do big physical movements on smaller vocal choices, but it's the climax of the song. So when you want to like drive home the end, you got to kind of throw everything you've got at them. Um, so before this, I just take a huge breath. I don't do a ton of moving right before this happens so I can get my breath about me. I also have taken my corset off. Um, my notes um which allows me to get an even bigger belly breath now something that singing burlesque performers have to think about is the fact that when we breathe we breathe into our diaphragm like down into our lungs and when our, and our diaphragm is going to expand which is going to make our stomach stick out so you have to like be cool with that because it doesn't matter how big your stomach is you're still that doesn't change the level of performing you're doing so like be comfy with it you don't and because there's no room in singing for trying to like suck in and hold everything tight. That just is not gonna happen. <laughs> and you get, you're not gonna make pretty sounds if you do that. So you have to be comfortable with kind of letting your body be a little looser than you might, you know, originally be comfortable with. But it's also like a wonderful exercise and like self-acceptance of like where your body is at that moment because you have to be loose in order to make a pretty sound. So would you rather make an entertaining and nice sounding act or look a, like this much tighter and more sucked in on stage like uh, to me it's a pretty obvious choice so I let myself be pretty loose on stage I'm fairly comfortable with like the amount of stuff going on with my body whatever size it's been at it's been all kinds of different sizes but it's something to think about when you're thinking about doing a sing and strip um and at the end I <laughs> I it's just a reminder like the mic is going to stay on especially if you have a headset mic until basically you're off stage so <laughs> anything you say is going to be heard um, while you've got that on, uh, which is always a room to like give the audience one little last peek at your personality, which I always love. All right, very cool. This has been the anatomy of a sing and strip, everybody's girl edition. Um, if you ever have any questions or thoughts about putting up your own sing and strip act or developing one, um, I love to talk shops. So you can always reach out to me on any of my social medias, which I'll put a little linksy doodle um, and ask me questions or in my email, little, put a little thingy um, and we can talk about it. Cause I just, I want people to feel more comfy singing and adding singing to burlesque because it was such a part of it, you know, back at its inception and all throughout it and like the cabaret and burlesque worlds are so intermixed and intertwined. I love when I see other singing performers. Um, if you feel so inclined to send me some dollar dollar bills for my work here, here are my tipping options. Uh, dollars are always appreciated, but never expected. I mostly just love to talk about art. Uh, so hit me up and Godspeed with your own sing singing. All right, get out there, do the thing. <laughs>